tweaking and getting ready to jump at him. And that is because I made the mistake of glancing up at him. <laughs> so, I'll take it out and save it under. So I won't bring you in because she's very territorial. They all are. Now, he's really small. Did you see that difference? He's only half her size. This is the smallest harrisoak in all of Ireland. This is a boy. The boys are always smaller. And he's from Peru. And down in the south of the range, the subspecies is, is about two thirds the size. So he is literally, he's actually less than half her size. She's one of my biggest. Um, but size means nothing. He's absolutely full of personality. And see how grumpy he is with me. I'm so slow and annoying. And he's worked with me for 10 years, so he's learned that. So he's going to jump to you. He's not aggressive. He won't try and bite. It has to be higher, even. Well, higher. Yeah, exactly. It's trying to get higher. And I have a sneaking suspicion you're not going to try to, but you can never pet him or touch him because he'll just think you're going to grab him and hurt him. And he doesn't have hands on his wings. He has these big talons that look like our hands. The wind is quite strong, so we're actually going to turn this way so he can face him. Now, I wouldn't normally have you up here on this kind of construction site to start, so I apologize. No. It's the worst photos, but it will get better. I am going to be changing his equipment. And I have to pay him to let me. Oh my goodness, Andy, I'm doing a terrible job. So, he is... Um, more reactive with my hands than pretty much any other hawk in the school and the reason i think is because he's so small so when i change her equipment i can do it without touching her i can't with him so he's constantly feeling my hands touching his feathers and touching his legs and he's just reminding me he's not a pet he'll tolerate it and he won't fight with me if i do it too much he won't come back this hawk can survive perfectly well without me you ask if they ever fly away and don't come back, he has, but he's the only one who does. So we're going to start walking and he will start jumping, he's very impatient. So you just keep your hand closed and try to be relaxed and just walk with me, stay beside me. You'll notice, he's flapping and jumping, you notice where he's not looking. But sometimes where he's not looking is just as telling as where he is. He doesn't look at you once, okay? He's not afraid. But if he's jumping, it's because of the wind, because of the corners, he doesn't like not being able to see, and you'll imagine he has seen two hawks since we've been standing over there flying around in the school where they're not supposed to be, so he'll be aware of them, he'll be where they are. Here, he might have to jump to see that there's nothing behind the wall. And it is extremely windy for a little bird like him. Uh, Jonathan, we're gone down the way, I didn't write it. Thanks. We have a car. Yeah, and they might be in the office. I'm going out with you. Sure, sit down for your own. Yeah, fine, sure. Um, he's so jumpy, nothing else will stop him. Now, stay right with me. Yeah, don't let it catch your fingers. I'm always afraid of a swing. Um, I don't know what way to move because the wind is spiraling around us. Normally, he wants to see around this corner. Out this way, it should help. But he does whatever he wants all the time. He has met scary things around this corner more times than I would like to admit. You know, a dog will come running around the corner with no owner. And it's jumping, thinking that's the most exciting thing in the world. And this is tied to you, and he knows it. So this is where he's least comfortable. Oh, little I don't feel suspense. You, <laughs> no, it's because he was jumping for the food yeah. and I was too lazy to oh, that, you know, yeah. go to you. Yeah. I'm going to put a radio on him before we let him go to. I just want to get out of the way of the car. So you can see the fixation is <clears> on the right now, but only for a second. Um, come out this way a little bit. You seem to have shelter from the wind. When you come out towards me, you know, we want him to see over the wall. So if you come out, give him a better view. There you go with this one. Thank you. 
Even a bike it comes around the corner really quickly, that's scary. Do you know, or a horse can be scary too if it's got a human on its back and it's trotting. Mm -hmm. That's not exactly natural behaviour. And so all of these things make him very alert and this is where he meets most. So all he wants is for us to let him go. We can't. His cars, his electrical wires, yeah. all kinds of things. So you holding on to him is kind of like just holding a dog by his leash. I know, I'm glad that's a lie, my dog loves to be on the lead, it's very weird. <laughs> Because where I live, I never have to put my dog on a lead. My dogs are obsessed. If I put one on, mm -hmm. all my other dogs try and touch it. <laughs> so I can walk all my dogs with one lead. They're all obsessed. He seems pretty, uh, now, he's getting a little bit more relaxed. I see that. He, he, it's not that he's not being relaxed. It's just being obstacles in his way, things he couldn't see past. Yeah. Um, do you know, his brain works so fast. That's one of the hard things for us to kind of get our minds around. He is in slow mode right now. You know, the church is probably at 45 miles per hour and he's processing images 10 times quicker than this. He has been watching those corners coming up to him for what feels like minutes. So he's, he's not patient in the slightest, but I still think he's not too bad. I think I'd be worse if I were him. So now I'm going to put a radio on and talk about it. So, I'm just going to throw you completely into the detail. So, he's untied, and you can open your hand. That tells me something. He wants to go, but he wants to use your muscles. Do you know what? my movement. And then relax your open. Put your hand down. Everything we're going to do is relax. So keep it straight. Yep. And that is neutral. You're not giving him rewards, you're not kind of communicating. We're going to start walking. This could leave a bit of building on the move away. You know, if he's coming into us, if we're calling him and an engine starts, he might get a start and jump and kind of get right. As we start moving, we're useful. So we're walking along and animals are watching us. You hear little birds alarm falling in here. So he responds at the right point of place. And he's waiting to see whether they will be flushed, whether they'll run away from us. Mice run for home. Everything is moving right away. So he moves ahead of us. Look to see where everything is. Oh, that's an amazing fight. Okay, Ava, turn your left shoulder towards him and point your gun. Now, that was very much in the deep end, and I love that I've called you in front of a car at this moment here, but that flight was too good not to look. So open up your hand, turn, and cast him off like you're throwing a paper. So send him forwards, not back. Okay? So if you're, he's not patient, but when you're sending him, always send him this way, so he can kick and use your muscles and see where he's going. But if you send him back, then it's okay. It's all really weird for me to call him in the movie. Ruining your photos. No, that was fine. <laughs> no. Well, you never have any pictures. Obviously, this is a huge amount of work to get that guard yeah. down. Make sure we are paying attention. We're going to keep walking because we might be waiting for something to run as we go past. Normally it's a mouse. Ander's eyesight is much better than ours. In lots of different ways. This is very unusual. He's having fun with the wind. He doesn't normally do these high fights. He stays low and sneaky. So he can see colours that we can. And this can see into the ultraviolet. Okay, you can turn your left shoulder towards him and jump up. That's perfect. You You're giving him a branch. Open it wide, keep it open. And then turn him this way, just so we, I know we're sheltered, but when he takes off, he's going into the wind. That was me translating. That's exactly what he was thinking. See the way he looked at you. He's like, that arm is longer. Yeah. And he looked at you. <laughs> Perfect. You very quickly with Andy just gained yeah. his trust. No, you're just in hunting ground. So he wanted a boost. If the wind had been in his face, he wouldn't need it. He would have gone before you even went. Yeah, he sees into those violent sections. 
the way that he's looking down beneath him, if there are mice nesting somewhere like this, because there's trails of urine leading in and out of their birds, and he signals to us with the tail, the end is white, so reflecting the view. Even when he's looking that way, he's still watching us. He doesn't have peripheral vision the way we imagine. Uh, our eyes are not very good. They're good for a mammal, but from a bird's point of view, they'll be pretty terrible. Um, most birds see more colour than we do and have a greater field of vision. So Andes has two focal points in it. Sometimes if you... Just watch. So this movement got his attention. <laughs> Sorry, he's very, very shallow. So I offered to throw a piece of food into the air, but he knew I didn't explain that to him. So he basically acted like you were supposed to call him, and if you had raised your glove, I'd have handed him this piece, and you'd have to use much less energy. I, mean, I just wanted to show you, even when he's looking the other direction, he sees that movement straight away. If you were to throw food on the floor in front of the pigeons, you'd have to cock your head to the side and look Over the corner of your eye is the greatest sensitivity to movement. Um, so his field of vision is 270 degrees, and there's no blur of anything. So the area of his retina with the lowest density of cells is twice as many as our food. I should have pointed out before the noise started, but there are flocks of tiny waves moving in the canopy, keeping an eye on them. They don't have much to fear. If you're very, very small, you're also very maneuverable. Hmm. Right. The left shoulder to show him the back of your eye. He's already and then keep it open because if he is frightened by noises or by dogs or anything he might see, you're telling him he's full. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah, you can hear the birds call the rain. Everything knows its own strength and it just gets into a safe position. So the tiny birds which we're hearing, which I can't remember really hearing. Um, um, they are gold crests, so they're the smallest bird in Europe. Um, and if they stay up in the canopy, by the time Andy's would climb up towards them, he'd be tired. And then all they have to do is jump around in pine needles like bow fight. That's not just a turn. But if they run, they are very small. The moon always comes, especially when the wind comes. Yeah, he's really easily offended, and this is the problem. So, I'll just point out, I'm not sure if you can see it stopped moving, but there is a song thrush in the tree directly behind him. See it moving? You may notice it's actually moving its wings. So whenever Anders will look at it, it will flick its wings and its tail to show him its shape. You know, he's clever enough to know that that bird has a certain amount of sprint in it because of its wing shape, a certain amount of maneuverability right now,
seven months old, he had caught 80 crows. <laughs> so he came and he started doing hawk walk. And he's out hunting and he, you know, chased a, a pheasant into a bush and someone just went over. He just gets offended. He goes off by himself. So this bird did end up going back into the wild. Um, and it took quite a lot of work to convince him to come back. It took pretty much the last eight years. Uh, to get him working with new partners. <laughs> Lovely. Did you see it's really weird movements? He's having to close one wing and then the other to come through the canopy. I like to point out as well a Peruvian hawk with a tree from his homeland. Of him. Hmm. These trees will have been brought from Peru that Genesis planted them back in the late 1800s. Yeah. I would call it a monkey puzzle. <laughs> That tree, I mean, that's a big monkey puzzle considering there's less yeah. than a foot of soil. Yeah. And that thing is big. It's huge. facing into it. So, so we're not going to turn and send him that way. I'm telling you that he's going to um, He learns to communicate with me in ways I understand. So there's quite subtle looks that I just know me with me to make. So he took off into the wind and turned it. I was going to jump in, I would rather if he didn't. And um, when he was, let's see, he was probably about six months old, the first time he attempted to catch a duck. Oh no. And he caught a mallard in a very flooded field. A uh, mallard is three, three and a half times his weight. And I pulled him under the water. Oh. Yes, he was a goat. So I had to go running into the water, feeling around in the bottom, and I managed to catch all of them. Take him out in the water, he was still holding the duck, he killed the duck and he ate it. Now he has learned that it's a very effective hunting technique. Call him back from there and watch him come through. See? I know, I'll pick it up. Um, I just didn't want to get in the way. We can open it wide from Even if it's on the floor, sometimes he'll jump, but he does want me to pick it up normally. Because uh, it's easier. It's easier to take off. <coughs> so, I think we can turn and send him out. Yeah, those guys through the trees, they're always the ones that I want people to see because that's what these folks do in the wild and yet it's something that we really sort of ever see in the wild. There's nothing to worry about. And the longer you work with him, the more trusting he is, the closer we can come. You can call him from here. He won't see us. And I don't know if he'll hear me. Open. Don't worry, he will try to get my attention. If it's a big piece, sometimes he can't contain himself and say something. You can turn, you can see something behind us. Send him off. There must be more on the floor. Okay, go again. 
Don't worry, it's perfect. So, something made him nervous back there. I can't see it, but it could be anything. You might have a little hawk sitting there, a wild one. Oh, I did see a splash. You could have maybe like an otter or a monster or something in the water. Something did splash in the water. Hmm. So, Andrew disappears. Okay, then. I'm going to see if he'll come back. Now, I'm not even sure if he's here. He's going to come Oh, he's coming. Here. Problem with the bell. I hear them everywhere, even when he clearly wasn't moving. Can you keep it open wide? Can you see it? The movement when he tells me something it's very small. I'm going to turn, pass them off, then we go for it. Or he's quite excited there for some reason. Um, Where do you go? <laughs> I, I'm moving my phone to my bag because we're coming to a flooded section. So if he is hunting, I'll be. Uh, Probably throwing my Yeah, he acted like he had seen something, so he got very tense on his own. He was waiting for the push. So the birds that you can hear alarm calling are how you pin them. You can hear them in a circle when you got them right here. And you do every year. We get ducks coming in to feed in here. And ducks are hard to catch as you do. Not so hard in there. But ducks are underappreciated. And the next time you see a duck flying, realize that you're seeing Andes using gears. He tries to save energy, he flies slow at times. The duck never. Every time a duck is moving, the duck is 100 percent Yeah. And he's doing it for hours which is why he has that huge breast muscle, which is why people like him. So, give him a call. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it felt going. ring. The speaking. That's actually very sweet when he's cleaning his beak on you like that. Okay, like pass you. him off. He's not going to go where you want, but don't worry. He'd already picked it. So how far in advance does he know like where he's going to lay it or what he wants to do? Uh, well, if he doesn't pick his route, he won't leave the glove or he'll land on the floor. So that's why if you send him backwards and he can't see, he, he always just goes straight around. Right? Um, it depends, you know, it depends what he's doing. And how long have you, sorry, how long have you worked He's coming. Oh, whoa! There's no gap there. Uh, his entire life. Oh. Since he was 10 days old, and for, for seven years I was the only falconer working with him, which is amazing for me. And we can open the hand wide and send him off. And so if Andy is going for prey, before he leaves the branch, it depends what it's doing. If it sees him, he just goes. But if he has time, sometimes you'll see a hawk moving his head like this. Bobbing his head, either side to side or up and down. So he has two focal points in each eye. <laughs> Call him in again. Mm -hmm. Keep it open. I try not to give him too much time because I don't want to go swimming. Pass him off. He has such a tendency of catching things in that water and I have to go in every time and it's so cold. And, mm. and it's deep mud. It's horrible. I'm so smelly when I come out. So yeah, we rely on binocular vision to judge distance, um, but birds have binocular vision everywhere. So, you know, and this is binocular vision over here, over here, and when he really wants to use, you know, depth perception, plan a route that he can sneak up and prey, he uses all four focal points in what's called stereoscopic. Wow. <laughs> so 
I saw that bird land in that tree, how has he just come? That is Anders, yeah, it is Anders. How has he just come from that yeah, tree? Yeah, I saw him go through that. Yeah. But how did he get there? How did he come over the bow of the hill rather than moving from the tree? I clearly saw him land in. I'm sure I'm still looking at it. Okay, you can cast him this way. That was cool. He's playing with you. <laughs> He's just so fast. Yeah, so when he no, uses... No, and bells are quiet and yeah. he no bells. I know. How, does he know? Yeah, when he's he doing his sneaky flight, it, his bells ring when he beats his wings, and he's trying not to, okay. do you know, so when he's coming in, he was low, yeah. and he was moving into the wind. So he's using two things, he's, he's um, using the ground effect, and slopes over him, effectively. Um, and yeah, when, when you're flying into the wind, you're just cutting through it, you know, he's not having trouble. That's <laughs> um, but he often flies very low. He does use the ground effect very effectively. So, I like to call it here So look how low. If you stay a wing length or less from the floor, you enter the ground effect. You don't have to use as much energy to get here. He has also learned, not only does it save energy, nothing can see you. You can sneak up on a crow in the middle of a field and it won't see you coming. It's an awkward spot. Because he wants to go that way, but if you turn, he'll lose the ass. He'll lose balance. Yeah. So I didn't really know what to do with that himself. <laughs> He's having fun. <laughs> Hunting the whole time. And the reason he kind of asked you to turn and send him, did you notice he gave you a little tap? He used so much fuel on takeoff. He really appreciates the push. He doesn't need it. You're not telling him to go. You're not giving him permission. He's only waiting because he likes to push the pump. I've, I've taken off in no wind before, the paramotor. Tire so work. hard, <laughs> so hard. You gotta lean back and like, yeah. yeah I, the I angle of attack. As well. When you see him take off from the floor, yeah. he has to jump high enough to get the wings closed beneath him. Yeah. You know, so I mean, even just that kick is a key to that wing. And you know, when a little bird like that alarm calls in front of us, I still can't see it. You know, it, it, it seems really stupid to us. Why is that bird drawing attention to itself? It's drawing attention because it's camouflaged from us and our limited vision. But a lot of birds that live on the floor are as bright as peacocks to other birds. There he goes past us. Huh. And the blackbird is a great example. I can hear it from they feed on the floor mostly. Sometimes in the night they feed along the edge of the ground. Oh yeah, down. So on the lawn, <laughs> uh, can you see this hat comes off to the left here? There it goes. Got a like that. No, maybe not. He's looking over his shoulder. So, sometimes he can't see. The feet are under the knees. He said he wants to see the movement. He doesn't want him to let go in case it's there. Shoot some people. Hmm? Yeah, that. We don't have it. Sorry, I heard. I heard one of my cotton. So what did he, why did he fall? Uh, he went for a mouse. Mouse ran into a hole. The mouse make a mistake. He got so close that he couldn't tell if he had it or not. He hit the ground hard, so if he did have it in his feet, it wouldn't have time to turn around and bite him. Could do anything to affect his survival long term. Uh, he does respect his prey. And is you're freaking me out. What can you see? It's an area. So did he catch it? No. Initially he didn't know, and that's why he looked over his shoulder at me. His feet were under the leaves. He didn't want to let go and move and check. He was trying to lift the leaves with his beak, but I just moved him out of the way and then he fell. 
very easy for a mouse to escape. It only has to step under a leaf. But they are the easiest thing to catch around here because birds are clever. Mm. All of these birds know not only what we're doing, but they know which hawk this is. They take him a lot more seriously than they would Rua, a big female who's 24. She's not bothered chasing them. You know, she's big and strong and heavy, but you're carrying all that weight at 45 miles per hour. It's a big turning circle. Whereas I'm here, incredibly we are going to look. Nothing sunny now. What is this about? I don't know. <laughs> but where did all that rain come from? Okay, you call it. Very quiet. Yeah. And then keep it open. We're going to turn and send them that way. Quite serious alarm calling ahead of us. Go for it. <laughs> Your turn entertained me so much. Sorry, I loved it. <laughs> you were trying to keep him so steady. You did your tiny little step. <laughs> so good. I'm going to attempt to throw a piece for him again. So you keep your gloves straight down, and he'll realise I've explained. Stop where you are. Terrible. I love that he carried it to the floor. Uh, what a weirdo. <laughs> so that was quite a difficult one for him because he was so low. He had to work hard to build up his speed, but he was still clever. The hardest thing to do is to climb quickly. So he built up his speed on the level so he could swing. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure you know something about yeah. flying, but I always think of like me pedaling furiously to well, cycle down the hill in front of my house so I don't have to. Work we try hard not to, to do that because the. Uh, the angle of attack on the wing is how the wing stays yeah. inflated. Okay. So, oh, yeah. so we're taught how to. So if the wing starts to. So we're a pendulum. So if we're going up this way and we're at the top, yeah. we have to pull down both two and then we dive and go keep going straight. Because if it goes like this, or if it does it too much, yeah. you can gift wrap yourself. Which I've never been there. I'm, I'm still. I'm still like a hundred hours in. I'm not. I'm a beginner. Yeah, but that's terrifying. I was like, I want to do this, and now I'm like, oh, I'm not brave enough. Well, we're going to go into this. Once you've heard and I'm yeah. looking at it, it's going to take off. It's very safe on the floor. There's no wind either. Yeah. yeah. It's just gone. <laughs> I was told I, I, I went paragliding in Spain <laughs> and in a few other places, but um, always in tandem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in Spain, yeah. you can do these tours in the summer, so you can actually travel across yeah. Spain. I'm paragliding, I'm doing a course, I'm getting certified, and I was like, I have to do this. And when I went and I spoke to them, they were like, Ireland is the most dangerous place in the world, don't do it. And I was like, oh. Yeah, probably because of the gusting. Yeah. The gusting is the bad part. Mm -hmm. Oi! Went for those birds. They're flying towards us, they're all moving around. Whew, don't think he got one, but why don't we call him in and see? He'll find a way. <laughs> I'll try to pick him up, but he's not that big. I'll give him a okay. Don't worry, I still have to pick him up. It's just I didn't want him to jump down, so I ride him to stay up. We're going to turn, and then open the hand wide as adrenaline pumping. So, there was a flock of birds that just didn't see him. I probably ruined it because I didn't know what was going on. I thought that maybe there was another hawk there. Um, so they were all up there and did you see, he he went through, like there, there's no gap. He is finding a way in to get them and he came very close. So when they scattered, two of them flew towards us, because we're the scariest thing out here. A wild hawk is unlikely to come towards us. And one of them goes down and he went straight after. So I didn't know if he had it in his feet or not. If he has prey in his tree, it takes an hour to eat it. It's a long wait. But if he has it on the floor, I can have it. He won't carry it to me. I'll call him here. I just love him with the light on. I'll open a wipe him. 
That's him about to feet between his feet. Very sweet. Or you can just walk with him if you prefer. Oh. Don't worry, he'll always go in one. <laughs> but when he's not tied on, he's really comfortable. Um, because now you're asking him to trust you. Mm -hmm. To trust you. Whereas earlier, he had no choice. We'll have to tie him on at the end, and he'll be unhappy about it too. Don't worry. Can you smell that? Yep. He's right there. Can't place it. What do you see? It's. I see. Um, oh, what? There's like a little black thing right there. Is that it? I oh, know I'm smelling urine. Sorry. Oh. Uh, an animal has sprayed here. I think it's a fox. What are you? It's right I here, smell it too. Show me what you're pointing at, though. Now so I'm we see that no, black. That I don't know if that's it or not, but something black. Oh, there's actually an animal. Yeah, I don't know if I know. your eyes are, you're like a hawk yourself. <laughs> oh, no, this is, this is fox urine. Yeah, no, I smell it. There we go. Gentle landing, the prey saw him long before he got there, but I know there's a fox. He might not, but he just makes that up. Do I walk over and make one here? A fox would have a go. Now you can imagine how we all know where the prey has gone if you look at the trees and the whole there. Presumably, now, this is why my job is on, because I'm a wimp. Yeah, you can see the hawk has an expectation that I can push prey out of And the reason he has that expectation is when I go hunting. When I go hunting, I go hunt mice, I go pheasants and rabbits. They do run away. We have, um, Jays, which are a different species to yours. Go on, you can raise it up. You can raise it up. Open it wide. <laughs> Open the glove wide, please. Let him see there's nothing in it. And you can attempt to send him off. He might be offended, but go for it. Oh, wait. Thank you, Um. So the Eurasian Jay is a different bird to American Jay. Uh, they're twice the size. It is a member of the pro family. Incredibly intelligent animal and an incredibly good mimic. And they don't learn to scare me. They can make me move, bring my hawk away from them. Um, so when we were out and Anders went to the floor, I heard my colleague's voice behind me. I was turning around, he's not. So and when we were over here on the floor, a bell rang. To make me think that there's another hawk. <laughs> because I always just try to move out of the way to avoid a hawk. <laughs> Can you see him? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's a chicken leg, which he could have swallowed whole, rather than showing you. And then keep it open, so if he does see a fox or a hawk, he knows he's free, and you're going to send him off. Bring it back so it's out from your shoulder. So you have all this forward momentum and then go. Look. So. I don't like crushing this time. I never It's called butter burr. In the museums in Dublin, you find um, what they call bog butter. People used to preserve food in the bogs because they're sterile. Mm -hmm. And they used to wrap butter thousands of years ago in the leaves of that plant. And it spreads very slowly, so whenever you find butter there or white garlic, you can lay it up. It's that you have to remind you how far it's going to be. Most of the mature trees have been planted. It's very popular. Fly right past it.
but the birds always give them away. When I lose them, when I'm looking for them, the birds are normally the best way to find them. You'll, you'll know, even a wild hawk, sometimes you're in a woods and you hear birds calling, calling, calling in a straight line. That's a hawk has flown past. Turn and send Yeah, he's so impatient. Beautiful right now. Yeah. <laughs> the light is really yeah, well, it's like, yeah, well, it's not really neat. Oh, yeah, but well, I've not seen light through the trees like this in a long time. So when he left, it was to chase something, but I saw him. You notice a lot of feather going into him now. As he's filling, see the big lump on his chest, mm -hmm. trying to make sure he has everything in. Turn, cast him off. So because he, he knows the movements, he probably knows the words, and because his brain is so much quicker, that's why every time I'm saying turn, he's turning before you have a chance. And again, that's not anything you're doing, wrong. that's just bad training on my part. <laughs> Don't eat the one I've been touching because there's, there's nice blood on it, but smell that. Do you like garlic? Yeah, it feels good. Oh, it's even better than normal garlic. Do you guys yeah, have it? Oh, I want to eat it. It's kind of spicy. <laughs> you can, you can mm -hmm. eat it raw, just not the one I've touched because I have mouse on my hand. It smells good. Mm -hmm. Okay, call him back over. There he is. So that tiny little bird in here, you can see where he is, see all that dense cover. He's mm -hmm. going to be like a bullfighter. He wants Andes to see him, he wants him to see his strengths and understand that he is not going to be caught easily. He's going to turn, <laughs> keep turning, because he wants to look that way. He sees him at all. So the wren will be flicking his tail over his back and opening his wings, and you can see him clearly. Still can. One just went across the path in front of it. I'm trying not to touch it. I'm walking slowly to the top. Oh, baby. So in Irish mythology, the wren is the king of all the birds. And uh, I really like it. It's very catchy. <laughs> Yeah, we're walking through <laughs> it as well. It's everywhere here. So this naturally grows or? Yeah, it's natural. Wow. And uh, it only lives in forests. So in areas of Ireland where the forests have been cleared, it can die off. But once you replant forests, even if it's been 100 years or 200 years, it suddenly reappears. That's a beautiful white flower. Yeah. So in another couple of weeks, you know, the bluebells will open and it will open. And the forest is completely white with blue over the top of it. It's just what are these gorgeous. yellow flowers I keep seeing? Uh, in the shrubs? The yeah. star ones? Uh, like we just passed yeah. in a big shrub. Uh, <coughs> give them a call there. It's very pushy at the end. <laughs> that is called first Forsythia. Okay. It's planted. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of the first thing to flower. We turn after 
I don't think it has any other use. It's just ornamental. <laughs> it is nice, but it's funny. When I moved here first, I noticed it. Because it's so common here, I actually don't even see it. No. <laughs> so people ask me what's the yellow flower, and I'll be like, a daffodil? <laughs> then I look at them and I'm like, oh yeah. All the magnolias that are open there, though, are beautiful too, I love them. Now, we're at the end. Right back there, Joe. I brought you in the back way to avoid wind and rain, forgetting that, of course, it's all stopped. <laughs> so you're going to call it a nice bit. I'm going to give him a bit more. Do you know, when I try to do it on your gum, I normally don't because he tries to hide it or grab it. He doesn't know what to do. See, he's expecting me to pick them up. The problem is, when he's eating it, he has a tendency to bring it up your arm. <laughs> it's weird. It's, it's the way he tries to hide it. And as you're making pig's ear of that, there is a bit in my hand and he knows, so I have to give it to him. And you can see him mantling, so he's covering it with his wings. Yeah. So yeah. that nobody can see it and try to take it. And normally, you just don't put your hand under a mantle. I do with him, just he knows him inside out. He'll still shout at me, and sometimes uh, you can actually see him kind of nip my finger. Now, nipping my finger is not good, it means I've done something I'm not supposed to, but it's quite a nice way to do it as a whole. Mm -hmm. Obviously, his mouth is not his weapon. I'm just going to tie him on. This is the first time I've given him a big bit on someone else's glove in years. So it seems to have gone pretty well. I think you're finished, little man. I'm going to see if you'll let me jest him while we're out here. This is actually one of the main reasons I normally do the big bit on my glove, so I can put this on with a reward in place. You know, the word reward. <laughs> See, I'm not actually annoying him when he's not looking, if he's distracted at something. Just when he sees my hands in there. And the big problem is his, his legs are so close together because he's so tiny and I have broad hands. And then I'm touching his tail and the talon. And every time I touch him, he thinks I've done something wrong. Raise the fist higher than the other two. Perfect. I put his weight on the foot so he didn't even think I was pulling it. So that's his use just as back on. The only difference between the two sets of equipment is the size of the hole. If you're safe to fly in with those, these will get caught in a branch. And you'll end up stuck in the top of a tree. There's a whole back in the school. <laughs> Maybe it's been carried. It could be everyone on edge because they've seen two hawks back and go to that free, so. So, the, this equipment has attached a big swivel. And it means that when we tether him, when we put him back on a perch, he can jump and have a bat and twist around and turn around to see who's flying around without feeling trapped. Your hawk should always feel safe. You know? He is tethered to a perch, but you don't want to know when he's tethered. He should just feel comfortable. Um, We'll start walking in. Nobody likes him. So if there's another hawk there, they'll come screaming. Okay? And you just act big and confident and that will make them think that you're, you've got his back. And I'll do the same thing. Sometimes I jump in their way and kind of like wave my arms. <laughs> so I assume it's gone. Did you hear everyone went quiet? Might have been the same as before. Coming to check what's going on and then just going to home. So our North American and South American Harakos, they are different subspecies and they speak a different language. They struggle to communicate with each other very effectively. So I'm a human little male. All of these birds are to be really cold. That's just not in his name. So some of them are a bit afraid, even though he's so small. 
has one very good friend. <laughs> What's the rock back there a minute ago? We, we hid for a minute. We'll head up to the Sorry? One very good friend in this world called Jabba. And Jabba and Andrew. Those two are also with respectfully bellies. They're babies. And he's four young men who were born three years ago. Sometimes she'll look like she's going to come over. She's mm -hmm. kind of scared. But he won't even care about his chain of feet. You know, even if she tries, she can't get near him. And obviously this girl is twice his size and he's never met her. So she doesn't do well with other birds. It's something that's weird. Um, she was a bird that was hatched at a bad time of year by someone else. Mm -hmm. We ended up taking her, getting her in December. Um, so she was born at a really bad time of year. Her parents may not have been. He's trying to lick my glove clean before he goes. He's growling at me. And I look, he won't let go. It's a little show up. <laughs> I just leave him. Um, <laughs> when I come to pick him up later in the day after he's kind of like that, he's settled down. He's just so grumpy. And sometimes, as I try to pick him up, he'll actually do that to me, like trying to scare me off. So he'll be going to the right? That's him going to the way. He is probably. Uh, 15 is heavier than the It takes a lot of beer. Uh, and only meat. So you can see one of his babies being brought out for, for a flight now. Kessie. <laughs> uh, I'll bring you over. 